Hello families, this is the second fraction video to take us to the next step of our learning. This video is all about finding equivalent fractions. Now we have looked at how to add and subtract fractions with the same denominator, but if you have a fraction that you need to add or subtract that has a different denominator, finding an equivalent fraction is key to being able to solve that problem. So equivalent means equal. So for example, the fraction I have here is a half. Again, you have to apologize for my drawing. It is not accurate, but just a basic representation. So I've colored in one half. Now, if I was to chop this diagram in half again, I would have two pieces colored in out of four. I haven't changed the amount that is colored in. And so one half, is the same as two quarters. If I was to chop it all in half again, I have four pieces colored in out of eight. So one half is the same as two quarters, which is also the same as four eighths. Now there are many different ways of finding equivalent fractions. There are lots of practical resources that are very helpful for doing this. But one method that I have been showing to the children to specifically for the work we have been doing this week is using our times table knowledge. Now times table knowledge is crucial for being able to do this easily. If we don't know our times tables, we find this much, much harder. So for example, if I had two thirds, but the rest of my equation, the rest of my problem, involved fractions that are sixths, I would need this to become over sixths so that I could solve this. Now, if I want that to become what it is over six, there's a simple time table related solution. What has three been multiplied by to become six? We do our three times table. Three, six. It's been multiplied by two. So then I times the top number by two as well. Whatever we do to the bottom, we need to do to the top. So two times two, two, four. So two thirds is the same as four six. Whatever you need to multiply the bottom by, you multiply the top by the same and you will get your equivalent fraction. Now I'll, show, I'll demonstrate this with some bigger numbers, make it slightly more challenging so that we can see how it works and then get set you some challenges to try. So if I had three fifths, but my question involves something where the fraction is 30, on the bottom. 30 is the denominator. I need to turn my 3 fifths into 30 fifths. So again, what have I times by on the bottom? And then I will do the exact same on the top. So count from my 5 times table. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So I have times by 6. So I then need to do 3 times 6 to give myself 18. So 3 fifths is equal to 18 thirtieths. So to find an equivalent fraction, to make it easier for doing more challenging work, whatever you need to multiply the bottom by, multiply the top by the same. The numerator and the denominator get multiplied by the same amount to make the equivalent fraction. So can you try that out with some of these? Two thirds is equivalent to how many sixths? Two thirds is equivalent to how many ninths? One quarter is equivalent to how many eighths? One quarter is equivalent to how many sixteenths? Four 
fifths is equivalent to how many twentieths? And seven ninths is equivalent to how many twenty sevenths? Six challenges there of increasing difficulty. And now for one mastery one. We've actually got the fraction that is bigger. So I've got 20 on the bottom. And I've got 15 on the top, 15 twentieths. If I wanted that to be quarters, what was that originally? Or what could you divide that to because you're going the other way? So there we have it, finding equivalent fractions. Many ways of doing it, lots of practical resources, but for the work we've been doing, we've been focusing on what we need to multiply the top and bottom, the denominator and numerator by, to find our equivalent fraction. Please practice this, and then this will be useful in the next video.